So for the practical example, we're going to use a marketing example. So let's take an example of a marketing team where um, you are not getting enough leads uh, as you want. So leads is the number of people who sign up for your page, who uh, want to talk to you about doing business with you. So are people who signed up somehow, who gave you their information, they gave you their email or something in order for you to eventually do business with them uh, at some point further down. So let's say that it's the number of leads. That is not, that is very low. Let's say it's very low as an arrow like that. It's very, very low in comparison to what you want. So what can be some of the causes for that, for that effect? When it comes to resources, maybe you don't have um, the right online technology. You don't have the technology um, to be able to collect leads, for example. Maybe you don't have the right analytics for that. Analytics. Maybe you have people who don't know how to write copy. So copy is the way that you write for people to give you um, their contact. So maybe you don't have, you have a lack of knowledge on copywriting. So these are some examples of resources. In information, maybe um, you're not really sure about what is it that they should sign up for. So what's the sign up for? Maybe um, you don't have the information of how many leads you should be converting to. So number goal. So maybe you don't know what is the goal number. So other information, maybe there is um, some kind of specific things about your product or service that you don't have the information about. So product or service. So these are some examples. Now in communication, number of leads, maybe you have different people working on online marketing and maybe you also have people from the sales department working on lead generation. Maybe you don't have any communication between marketing and sales. So maybe marketing, sales, communication is non-existent. It might be that um, when it comes to communication, maybe you have different channels for people to sign up for and they don't all convert in your analytics. So for example, so different channels. And it might be that um, you wrote your number of uh, leads that you want to have per month somewhere and no one ever checks whichever platform that is. So maybe it is that um, the goals are in a platform or, or are in a file that is not seen every day. So People just don't see it. People don't see it. Don't see the goal. So these are a couple of examples. In collaboration, it might be that um, you have someone in your team who knows copy, but is not necessarily responsible for that. And so people are not talking together. So maybe, um, you know, the expertise is not known for example, so people are not sharing the expertise. It might be that uh, a lot of people are um, writing the copy for different platforms on your sign up. So then they all have different messages. So different people with different, not messages, but voices. So it's not consistent, for example, with different voices. In the process, it might be that the process is never tested. So there's no A-B test, for example. It might be that it's not reviewed, for example. So no review. Or it might be that it needs to go through so many steps that it's difficult to change. Difficult to change. And then in alignment, it might be that there's no alignment when it comes to what is the voice of your brand. So brand voice. It might be that there's no alignment in terms of 
um, where we should direct direct traffic to. So direct traffic. So you can see that just like this, we identified a lot of potential causes for the reason why you don't have leads. And here we're saying you don't have leads, but it might be something else. It might be that um, people are not um, working together very much. And then you're going to look at different things. So maybe you don't, they don't have like a proper platform where they can collaborate. Maybe they don't have um, a, an easy way to share information and they need to look for information individually and that prevents them from collaborating. So whichever the effect is, you can then look back at the different causes that are potentially leading to that effect. So this is how you adapt the Ishikawa or Fishbone diagram to team management. These are the different types of causes that I do recommend that you use when you use this with your team. Now, practically, how are you going to use this with your team? The first thing you're going to do is to download a template of um, the Ishikawa or Fishbone diagram. And I'm going to leave a link down below for you to do that. And um, if you also want to draw it with your team, you can also draw it just like um, I did here. So you can also draw it. You don't have to use a specific template, but if you want, we're leaving a, um, a link down below for you to get a template for free. And what you're going to do is that you're going to use this for one specific effect. So it's not everything put into the same bulk. It's not, oh, our performance is low. It's not just like that. You're going to identify exactly what is the metric or what is the issue at hand. So maybe there's a problem in your communication with your team. Maybe there is a problem with uh, or a situation where you are not achieving a certain goal. So there are going to be different reasons, different effects, different observations. So think about that. Here is what you see. And this should be an eye. So the effect is what you see. What is it that you see that you don't want to see anymore? What is it that you see that you would like to have it differently? Is it the number of leads? Is it um, the speed of your development? Is it something else? What is it that you are seeing right now that you would like to change? That's your effect. And then you go over the causes and you identify them. So you can do this with your team. You identify all of the causes. This, I would suggest that you would take at least 30 to 40 minutes to identify the causes. And then once you've identified the causes, what you're going to do is that you are going to then evaluate which of them are most likely really causing you to have less leads. So for example, it might be that really the fact that you have um, no brand voice is potentially really leading you to not have that many leads. The fact that maybe you don't have the tech is potentially leading you to do that. And then you're going to also identify what are the, the ones that are easier to change. So for, for example, it might be easier to change that we make the goal clear. People don't see the goals. For example, these ones might be easier to change and that already makes a difference. So then you can identify what are the things that you really need to focus on because they are most likely the ones that are contributing towards you not having the performance that you have, that you want. And then you're also going to identify which ones are the easiest to change which are the ones that maybe don't contribute that much, but still they do contribute a little bit and which ones are the easiest to change. And then you can start um, tweaking those little things and you're going to see an improvement in your performance. So this was our first wave in this small course about lean team management. We're going to have five waves. This was the first one. So we'll have four more. And if you haven't uh, subscribed, subscribe so that you can be notified about the upcoming waves with more tools, more tools from lean management that you can use with your team to improve and increase your performance and productivity.